On to our next example. So this time, 4 minus x squared fits the pattern for arc sine. So we're going to let x equal to, to get rid of that 4, I need a 2, 2 sine theta. So dx will be 2 cos theta d theta. And when I do 4 minus x squared, I get 4 minus 4 sine squared theta. Factor at the 4, this is, of course, 4 cos squared theta. And so in particular, if I care about that square root, we might notice that the square root of 4 minus x squared is 2 cos theta. Okay, so we have everything we need to make our replacements, and so we dive right in. That numerator becomes 2 cos theta. That denominator is 4 sine squared theta. All right, x squared, dx. We have 2 cos squared theta, d theta. OK, constants cancel, right? 2, 2, 4. Um, oh, sorry. Thinking ahead. That's just cos theta. OK, so this time we've got cos squared theta over sine squared theta. OK. Gives us cotan squared. Actually, we can work with that, right? We can work with cotan squared. Um, what is cotan? So we usually don't encounter cotan that often, right? Um, but we might remind ourselves, just kind of hop over on the side, and we say, hey, so remember sine squared plus cos squared is 1. If we divide everything by sine 1 plus cotan squared is cosecant squared. So this is the same thing as the integral of co, oops, cosecant squared theta minus 1. All right. And we know that cosecant is, is the derivative of, well, it's minus the derivative of cotan. So this becomes minus cotan theta minus theta plus C. Okay. So cotan is, is cos over sine, right? So we've got to come back to here. We've got to say, okay, so cosine over sine. So cos theta... Is, is 1 half square root 4 minus x squared. Sine theta is 1 half x. So if we divide them, we're going to, the, the halves are going to cancel. I get the square root of 4 minus x squared over x minus theta, which is arc sine of x over 2. Plus our constant. 